In this video, I'm going to show you how to print out the musical score from the melody track of any of those MIDI song files that I send you. So let's start at the end. This is what we're talking about. Printing out on your printer the lead track of the melody of the MIDI songs. I, when I looked at this picture, I thought, oh my God, this looks like some homeless man that Sue took in and took pity on and, and brought home and gave him a cup of coffee. This is what I look like with a two days of a growth of beard before I shave. Apologize for the rough look. All right. So let's start with the MIDI file. Here is the MIDI file one that I actually sold, sent to you. This is Have I Told You Lately. So step one is I'm going to open up GarageBand and then I'll drop this MIDI file into GarageBand. So here we go. I'm going to go down to my dock and I'm going to find GarageBand and click on it to launch it. Now GarageBand always opens up whatever you're working on last. So ignore this. You're just going to go up here and say new under the file menu, new. And we will select an empty project. And then down here in the right hand corner, I click on the choose button. Ready? Click. And then it opens up this window and it says, what kind of a track do you want to start with? And let's start with a MIDI track. So I've clicked on the MIDI keyboard icon, and then I come over here and I click on the word create. Ready? Click. And so now we are into it. It always has this little window. This is for people who don't actually have a keyboard. You could use the keyboard of your Macintosh to type in notes. A horrible, laborious way to enter music. We'll ignore that. So I'm going to reach up here and click on this uh, dot to make this window go away. Ready? Click. So here is the MIDI piano track that it automatically created. And that's what these controls are. These control the electric piano. And, that, and by default, this is what you always get when you open up and start a MIDI file. So the next thing I want to do is I want to drop the MIDI file into GarageBand. So let me pull this down so we can see it. Here's the MIDI file. These are the one I actually sent you. So I'm going to click, hold, drag. And what you want to do is you want to drop it right below this track. Notice how this highlights. You want it just below that other track and move it over here to near the beginning, somewhere in this area. And I'm going to let go now. Ready? Let go. So I have dropped that MIDI file into GarageBand and it automatically creates all the tracks. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't get the instruments correct. You, I have to go in laboriously, track by track, and figure out what instrument I want to play that. That's not what I'm concerned about today. The next task is, where is the melody? Where is the track that we want to print out? Now, I know just by looking at it that it's up here, but let's assume we don't know where it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and select this track by clicking on it, and I, I have this white bar, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this little icon that looks like a headphones, this is the solo. When I click on it, click. What I have done is I have soloed that track. Everything else is turned off. Now, it turns out that I started the MIDI recording before I actually started playing. So that's why there's all of this dead space before the music actually starts. 
But let's listen to this. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to hit the play button and I'll watch this bar. I realize that the music doesn't start till over here. That's okay. Ready? Play. You know, I'm going to stop right now. I don't like the metronome, so I'm going to turn off these two items. I'm turning off the metronome. And let me pick this up with my mouse and start over. By the way, you can just, once you move your mouse on here, you can move, this is the, called the playhead. You can move it anywhere you want. In fact, I'm going to move it right over here so I don't have to sit here and listen to all of this dead space. So now I'll go back to the play button and hit it. Ready? Play. And sure enough, that's the melody track. So that'll be step one. After you've dropped the melody file in here, you need to figure out which one of these tracks is the melody track because that's the one you and I want to print out. That's the one that you silenced and you went in and put your own instrument in there. All right, step number two. Over here in the top left corner is a pair of scissors. And if you hold your mouse on it, it claims that this is the editors. These are the editors. So I am going to click on the scissors. I'm going to click and open up the editing window. Ready? Click. So here is a window that has been opened up. And this is specifically for just this track. And this might look familiar. This is a piano roll. So let me back it up. And sure enough, if we come up here and play, it's like an old fashioned player piano. Dun, da, 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 da. Player piano. And those are the holes in the paper. Okay, we're almost there. This won't do us any good. I, I, you, you can't even print this out. So here's the critical step. This window has two options, piano roll and score. In other words, musical score. So I'm going to click on score. Ready? Click. Aha! This ought to look familiar. So we are now staring at the musical score for this track, which I, I soloed. So you select the track, then you come down and click on score, and we are looking at the musical score. And once again, let me grab the playhead and back it up, and we'll play this and watch it. It's kind of like the bouncing ball. Now, let me stop that. By the way, if I tap the space bar, that's how I can start and stop the music. Rather than coming up here all, every time and clicking this, just tap the space bar. Okay? So, this will bounce along and show you what note is playing. It is not absolutely precise. It's very, very close. I would argue it's close enough. So don't be worried if it looks a little spastic. All right, so here we go. Okay, looks right, sounds right. So that's what you played. Actually, we're listening to me play it, but then you played it and recorded it. Okay, we're almost done. So we have figured out which track has the melody. We've opened it up with the editors, the scissors up here. That was the second step. Then we clicked on score to be able to look at the musical score, not the piano roll. We want to look at the notes, the musical score of this track. So the only thing left to do is to print this. So let's go up to the file menu and select 
print. Ready? Click. And it tells us, you know, what printer. So, uh, you know, I'll say my office printer here. It's the only one I have. And then I click OK and we go to the second page. Now here's where I have more print options. Just to save paper, or I'm sorry, to save ink, I print things in black and white. And if I click up here, I'm going to ask it to print draft. And I'm just cheap. Uh, I want to save ink. And so printing everything in black and white draft saves a little bit of ink. That's good enough for me. Now, depending upon how long the song is, uh, if you don't do anything, it will print the entire song. And, and I see that my little song is two pages long. Uh, I'm just going to print one page, just the first page. So at this point, all I have to do is come down here and click print. And then walk over to the printer and pick up the, the sheet music. Let me show you what else you can do. If you come over here to the left, where you see this PDF, put your mouse on that and click it. Ready? Click. And a window opens up. And so instead, instead of sending whatever I have on the screen out to the printer, I can send it to different places. For example, instead of going to the printer, I can say, you know what? Save this image that would have been printed, save it as a PDF, and then I can mail that to someone. So that's how I could, I could email you the printed musical score if you, didn't, uh, if you didn't have a printer yourself. The other thing I want to show you is this option, Open in Preview. So what this says is, don't actually go out to the printer, just show me, let me preview what is about to go out to the printer. And I'm going to select that. Ready? Click. And it opens up a window. And so I am now looking at what I am about to send out to the printer. So I find this very useful. You know, I kind of like to know, is, is this what I think it is? Absolutely. This is obviously the musical score to the melody line of my MIDI song. So once I've done that, uh, I'm just going to come up here and click on the left-hand dot to close that window. Once I have previewed it, then I'm ready to print. So I go back to print. I tell it I want it draft. I want it black and white. Uh, just print the first page. And I'm done. And I hit print. And I don't know if you can hear it, but behind me, three feet away, my little printer is printing out the musical score. So that's it. You drop the MIDI file into GarageBand, you find out which track plays the melody, you select it, you come down and turn on the score, not the piano roll, the score, and then you go up to print and you print it out. Just for fun, let me, sh let me show you something about this piano score, or piano roll. Uh, this is, pardon me while I'm messing around here. This is very handy because let me back up here. So I'm going to play and listen as I watch. That's what I played. What if I made a mistake? What if I played this? Da, da, da. Whoa, da, 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 da. If you click on it, you can hear each one. Click, click, click. Ooh, so watch this. I'm pressing and holding my mouse. That's where it should be. 
So I know you've heard that you can correct things in MIDI. This is the easy way to do it. You can reach out and change any note. So if your finger slips and you make a wrong note, you can change it. By the way, you can also do that in the musical score. I'm clicking on it. Watch this. I'm going to click and hold. So I can actually correct any mistake in the musical score. That's a little more detail than you probably wanted, but it's nice to know. This is one of the great things about GarageBand and MIDI is the ability to correct a single note. Maybe it was wrong, your finger slipped and you hit the wrong one, or it came in too soon or too late. You can actually adjust all of that. And, uh, and piano roll is a real easy... Look at this, I can move it forward and back. When, did, when does it play? What note does it play? Okay. So, I hope that's helpful. The important point is I wanted you to know how do you print out the musical score of the melody line of any of these MIDI files that I send to you.